Thank you all very much. And I know that this is the time of the year when we celebrate all kinds of things and we have fun and we get excited, but I'm going to have someone who's celebrating something totally different right after this. And you're gonna be impressed, I know you are. So don't touch that dial. Be sure to call a friend and ask them to tune in. Call us right now. Our prayer lines are open. Please join the body of believers. God put in my heart five years ago to produce this show, and it's about uniting the body of believers. And every show, we're going to reach out and touch you guys and see if we can't unite you as a body of believers, one by one. As in Ephesians 4, verses 4 through 6, we should be one body, praising our one Lord and our one God. It's not about where you go to church or if you go to church or, you know, it's about do you believe? Have faith. Believe in God. Become a believer. If God is in your heart, the world changes. Your whole life changes. And you'll be so happy because you're going to be full of God's love. I mean, how much easier does it get, you guys? But join the body of believers. So together we can all say, I believe. <laughs> It's time for another I Believe program, and let me tell you, like I said earlier, a lot of people celebrate a lot of things, and it's happy time, and this goes along with this. I promise you something different. We're going to meet a leader of a Celebrate Recovery group, and I want to know more in detail. So first off, I'm going to introduce my friend, Miss Glenda Bolton. She's the leader. Nice to see you, Miss Glenda. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being here. It's been here. a while. It has been. And then we have David Klein, yes, and you are what with Celebrate Recovery? I'm a ministry leader coach. All right, look at this. Mm -hmm. And then we have Nelson Carvalho over there, and I think you're a volunteer? I'm, I'm being trained for Celebrate Recovery. All right, yes. look at that. So it's very structured, right, Ms. Glenda? Yes, ma'am. Tell us about Celebrate Recovery. <clears throat> well, Celebrate Recovery started in, and you guys helped me out here, in 1991. Okay. And... At Saddleback Church in California. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rick Warren. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've got his book. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's awesome. And John Baker, of course. Mm -hmm. And now it's over a million people. Really? It's man. Wow. And it's in. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. And it's all countries. I mean, it's overseas. It's here. Look at I that. I mean, yeah. And uh, Praise God. it just spreads every day. Uh, and a lot of people have the misconception that it's about drugs and alcohol, mm -hmm. and it is, mm -hmm. but it's also about depression, overeating, um, domestic, really? oh yeah. I see, I didn't know that. <clears throat> domestic abuse, um, oh. gambling, uh, whatever your hard habit or hang up is, that's what Celebrate Recovery wow. is about. Well, now, see, I have a lot of viewers that call me with these kind of issues, so they'll be watching. They'll be calling you. And so you're the leader. How did you get to be the leader? David Klein. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, we met five years, six years ago. Six years ago. Six years ago. And he asked me to lead his drugs and alcohol. And so For I did. Women. And the rest is history. For women. And, yeah, basically the rest is history. Um, I have a heart for Celebrate Recovery. Mm -hmm. I, I call it paying it forward. I love it. Because um, if you don't have a support team, mm -hmm. you fall by the wayside. Yeah, and that's almost true invariably. in anything. It doesn't matter what you're yes, doing. Yes, it does. You know, it, it's like almost like um, if you're a new Christian and mm -hmm. you don't have a support exactly. team, then you fall by the wayside. You're right. You get lost. And, you don't know what to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... I honestly don't know what I would do without. How wonderful! My church, 
my church family, mm -hmm. Celebrate Recovery. It's um, it's a haven. That's wonderful. Um, David has been an awesome help. He's one of the most awesome teachers I've ever, ever met. Never met one any better. I'll see David now. That's good that's, word. That's pretty good. That's yes, pretty good. That's <laughs> hey, listen, and he knows it too because <laughs> I don't give out compliments to him very often. So, David, what do you do there? I'm the uh, Celebrate Recovery Leader, uh, Ministry Leader for Celebrate. What we do is uh, we try to create a safe place so people can come and share their hurts, their hang-ups, their habits, whatever that, that's separating them from God. Really, we get all technical. It's really sin. We all sin. We all come Amen. and fall short of the glory yes. of God. Born and so sinners. what we create here is a safe place, a place that we can come not be judged, and we can <laughs> throw it out on the table and just share exactly what's going on in our mm -hmm. heart. But what's great about Celebrate Recovery is I do not, you do not, we do not have, you do not have to be identified by your hurt, your hang-up, mm -hmm. your habit. You right. don't have to be identified by your mistakes. You can be identified by being a child of God. My name is Amen. David. My name is David. I'm a child of God. I struggle with addictions. That says I struggle. It doesn't mean I'm an addict. I was an addict for 13 or for 22 years, and I've been uh, clean for 13. Praise God. Yes. What I like about Celebrate Recovery is that we offer an opportunity that we can come in like a workshop. Mm -hmm. You see, the Bible says, share your sins one to another and pray for each other so that you can be healed. Mm -hmm. and, and we say, well, I gave my life to Christ. Isn't that a healing? It is. We, when we, when we uh, give our life to Christ and we accept Jesus as our Savior, we get a not guilty verdict for our sins, but we still have the hurt. Yes. We still have the mistakes. We still mm -hmm. have the guilt and the hang-up from everything that we've done. Mm -hmm. So this is like a workshop. Mm -hmm. Bible says that the old man dies and the new man rises, Amen. right? Yes. And that's a word, but here's the deal. Here's how I see it. The old man, he's gone, but the new man, he comes in and he gets in the garage, he opens the door, and once he sees, he sees this old beat-up pickup truck, all right? And then the old man's don't wore it out. The header's tore up, the wheels are bald, you know, the, the fenders are caved in, and the hood is crushed <laughs> up, and the windows <laughs> broke. So Celebrate Recovery is a workshop. It's a place that we can come, and, and God can begin to help us one-on-one. -on -one. And what I love about Celebrate Recovery is that we create a support team. <coughs> we were not meant to be alone. We were meant to work together and mm -hmm. be together mm -hmm. and, and, and overcome mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. So through Celebrate Recovery, we, we've got a safe place you come and you can share your hurts, your hangups and habits. You go through the 12 steps of recovery. You have four guides and uh, each guide is done up. So through that, we, we create a sponsorship mm -hmm. and a fellowship with, uh, with uh, accountability partners and, and we're just excited about it. Excited. Viewers, now you know we don't have to ask. He is excited. Isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. He, is. he, is. he absolutely is. Yes. It's um, it's an awesome program. We also have a program for children. Have one for teenagers. Really, teenagers I mean, are getting into the drinking and all that kind of stuff too. And sad. they come broken homes. You know, um, you'd be surprised how it breaks my heart to know that there's such a need in East Tennessee and people aren't stepping up to fill it. I think a lot of it is they don't know. It's not, it's, I we think need so to too. make, this is why I wanted you on the show, to get create that awareness. Um, there's, there's people that are hurting and want to get better. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard, it, it's really hard because you're breaking out of your comfort zone. Right. You know, um, <clears throat> I know when, when I was an active addict, I didn't want to break out of it. I was comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. I knew, you know, and I thought I had friends and family. Not so much. Mm -hmm. You don't have friends. You don't have family. When you break away from that and you can go to a safe place and you know you're safe and you know that you've got somebody that you can call and say, this is a hard day for me. I need help. I need help. Mm -hmm. That there's somebody there. Right. And they're will... not judgmental. Exactly. To me, that would be the worst. Yeah, because... It, it, you you fit the like drugs and alcohol. There for the most part, there's there's women that have been through drugs and alcohol. There's men, drugs and alcohol, mm -hmm. uh, depression, um, overeating. You know, there's mm -hmm. all kinds of things, and you have somebody that has been through that. Right. And when you go to a meeting, you hear other people say, "Look, this is what happened to me," and then you don't feel like. Mm -hmm. You're all by yourself. The story of like, like yeah. in the testimony in the Christ story. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. Nelson over there, tell me what you do with this. 
Well, uh, my name is Nelson. I struggle with so many things. Anger being one of them. So, you know, it's not just for the addiction thing. Mm -hmm. uh, OCD, ADD, EGG. I see. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, that's an A. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know, the church, um, you know, we have people in the church who um, have these other hurts, you know, that may not necessarily be at the depth of alcoholism mm -hmm. or drug addictions. And, you know, we find that the church has kind of turned into a hotel for saints. Mm -hmm. And that's it needs cute. to be a hospital for sinners. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. Now, that's good. Mm -hmm. You listen to that, viewers. <laughs> a lot of them over late with that. Yeah. That's good. That's very good. And you brought up a good point because it's not just about drugs and, and alcohol mm -hmm. and no. anger and all these other issues. People, and I know because I get the prayer requests, and I know the issues that are out there. And everybody, every one of us, me included, put me at the top of the list. We all have issues. Yes. We all do. There's not a single person in this room that doesn't have a hurt, a habit, or a hang-up. Yeah. I not that. one single person. And it doesn't, viewers, one thing I want to say is it doesn't have to be a negative thing, you know. I mean, it, because you look at it as not negative. My big thing is I'm an overworker. I mean, I just work, 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 work. And that can be bad. <laughs> That can be bad. I can cry myself. So there's all kinds of things, and and I want to thank you all. To see the time just zip by, and and I just want to say, viewers, that this was just the tip of the iceberg. They have books. We're going to put the information out there. We're going to connect through the network. We're going to connect our website with your website, and we're going to put some information on the Creative Christian Network. We want you to spread the word out there. And more importantly, those of you out there that are hurting, that you don't know where to go, whether you're feeling lonely, whether you're feeling angry, whether you're feeling like you've got an issue with alcohol or a drug or something this phone number here if they if you're not near them they will direct you to a chapter mm -hmm. and the the key question the key thing that I want to get out there God loves you and these people here will love you and they will welcome you they're not going to judge you they're there to help you get better get stronger and get with God the most important thing in the mm -hmm. world Amen. we all need to say I believe come on guys oh. We will be right back after this. Our prayer lines are open right now. Please call at 865-680-1891. 865-680-1891. Don't go away. You're watching the I Believe TV program. Call me or text me. Don't go away, there's more to come. Okay guys, instead of just picking up that phone and calling me, there's another way you can reach me. Text me. But you, if you text me, it's kind of simple, just text me your need and tell me what time it's best time to call you back, and I promise you I will. It's the new technology on hand, and I'm getting with the program, so you do too, okay? Okay, now my guest right now that I'm going to bring to you viewers and we're going to listen to her story, um, she has a lot to say and I'm, I'm just going to pique the interest here. She, we met her husband in a previous show and he told his side of the story. Now we're going to listen to the wife's side of the story and there was a lot <coughs> of different things and issues that came about that we want to hear how God worked in her life because we heard from the husband how God worked in the whole situation. So welcome viewers, Miss Priscilla. Hey, nice how to meet you. are you? Good. <laughs> Thank you for being here and sharing your story. All Thank right. I'm now, glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and this is your son and how old is he? He's six. six. Look at that. Six. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> You're a cutie. Look at that. No right. <laughs> He's not shy, is he? No. That's wonderful. <laughs> Okay, Miss Priscilla, the, can you start in with, you know, I, we, we, let me just bring the viewers up to speed. Okay. We interviewed the husband, and he was a member of the Mexican cartel, had done everything bad that you can think of, the drugs, the infidelity, all the different things that go along with all that kind of stuff. And God got a hold of him, straightened him out, saved his life, not only physically, but spiritually spiritually as well and we saw the power of God but it, one of the things that I say are the bad things is when he was not being a, a good husband now how did you feel about that <coughs> I, well I was very miserable in my, in my relationship with him and our family I was just um, 
heartbroken, mm -hmm. you know, miserable, depressed, mm -hmm. um, even suicidal at some point. Really? And it was, it was very hard to deal with, um, mm -hmm. to tell him how I felt, to tell him what he was doing wrong to me. Um, he, it just, it never happened. He, we never had communication. We never could be able to tell each other anything. So mm -hmm. we just, um, when he went to jail, he was always in and out of jail. And, um, this final time that he's been to jail, I, we've been married for three and a half years. It's going to be four years in May mm -hmm. and we've been together nine mm -hmm. going on nine this month. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, it was just, it was very hard to mm -hmm. deal with everything. Um, all the double life he was living. Yeah. He mentioned that. So it was, it was very hard for me. Um, my family was against us getting married in the beginning and, um, just to even go with it and go with the whole process of being married. I was happy in my own little world in my mind. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, this, this time that he went to jail, I was actually just over everything, over being hurt, over feeling pain. And I, when he went to jail, I just told him I wasn't going to wait for him anymore. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to do the same things I was doing for him. And it was just going to be over with. Mm -hmm. So, um, I ended up, leaving or cheating on him or I could say cheating because I was married mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know, that's committing adultery right. and, and, um, when he came home, um, we actually, Pastor Walter called me and told me that my husband was coming home and I was not happy. Mm -hmm. I was very mad. I was, I just cried and I was very angry. You thought it was going to all start again? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I worked two jobs while he was in jail. I, I got my, I got myself wow. a, ha a home because I couldn't live in the house we were living at before because I was afraid to be there. Right. And, um, I got myself a new home and a car and, and I was just doing good. And I was never home with my own son because I was trying to get us Work. by. Yeah. So, um, when he came home, I was like, well, everything's just going to go back to what it was. Mm -hmm. And, um, had you communicated with him at all while he was in jail? We, we talked, but it was never nothing like happy or anything like that. It was, I was always angry. I would always yell at him or fuss at him. Um, mm -hmm. or I would just hand the phone over to my son and tell my son, here, you talk to your daddy, mm -hmm. but I would never want to talk to him. I have stacks and stacks of letters from previous years where he was in jail. And, um, I, I told him, it, you know, you've done this already. I've heard the same things. Like I can pull out a letter and what you're saying right now, you've already said. Mm -hmm. So I just couldn't handle it no more. But when he came home and, um, I got the call from Pastor Walter, I told him, you know, he's like, don't you believe in the power of Jesus? And I said, well, I do, but I lied because. I stopped going to church. Okay. I had stopped um, believing in what we were trying to believe together. Mm -hmm. And um, I just thought, well, if if God was real, why would he allow my husband to do these things mm -hmm. to me? A why lot would of people think like he that. Feel, yeah. Why would he fill me with hurt instead of love? Mm -hmm. And, um, well, that process came when he came actually home, when he physically came into my home. I told him, well, you can't stay here. <coughs> You, know, you, you have to find somewhere to go. Wow. And the next day, it was first day of school. I went to work and, and I came home. We sat down and we talked and he started telling me all these things and how we had this big basket full of all this sin that we were carrying on our on our backs and how he wanted us to start it over and just dump that basket and start clean and, mm -hmm. and have everything out on the table. So I told him I was very unfaithful and that... I didn't think he was ever going to come home because everybody around me would tell me he wasn't going to come home. Right. I had friends that were always telling me, well, that it was better for me to leave him, that I was, you know, they didn't want to see me unhappy anymore. And well, when, even, even the judge had told him yeah. that he wasn't going to come out. And, um, well, after we had our conversation, we've never talked like that before in our lives. Wow. And I was just like, you know, wow. And we ended up giving ourselves to God, we, we got into our church and it just, it, it cleans us. We renew our vows yes. and it just, it left, it lifted a lot off of me to renew our vows. Cause when we got married, I always told him it was fake. It wasn't real. Oh. And, um, I, all that 
that grudge I had against him, all the hate that I had against him from cheating on me, all the hurt, it all went away. Wow. And it was just like That's we strong. started brand new. And there yes. was like, like yeah. I love it. It was very uh, That's good. That's heavy. Good. It was very it was beautiful and yes. it still is. Um we talk more than we we ever used to. Beautiful. And um we're still have things like we, we want to learn to pray together instead of mm -hmm. like apart from one another mm -hmm. and you know I feel like God is still working on us mm -hmm. and um, but he's letting us show others that it is possible yes. to renew your love and and renew your marriage and um, it's just it's been a blessing and I'm just happy that he's home and that we're able to have our family and grow and be able to look back and say this happened but we made you it. overcame it with yeah. the power and in, in the in the the love that God has put in your heart and His heart because you had to forgive Him, He had to forgive you. I yeah. mean, it was a lot of stuff going on. That's the true power of forgiveness, you guys. And you mm -hmm. see, I mean, nothing is ever so bad that God can't straighten it out. And God was really, I mean, when I heard His story, God was there. I mean, yeah. working heavy duty overtime. And in your unit, your family unit. Yes, and it's just, it's hard. I know a lot of us women say, well, we can't do it. You know, yeah. we look back at the divorce. <coughs> and mm -hmm. I thought about that. <coughs> mm -hmm. I did. I really did. And when we came clean to one another and we sat across from each other and we said, this is what we've done. This is what's going on. And, mm -hmm. and we're going to leave it behind in the past. God cleansed us not only from each other and the things we've done for from each other, but everyone that was around us, even my best friend that I consider my best friend, they're all gone. And um, wow, they just it was just I guess it was just bad negativity. But yeah, I I was just like amazed because I was like, wow, I always trusted everybody around me. Uh -huh. But God didn't think it was good for me. Now I'm united with better people. You know, I have new friends. I have more people that I can talk to, but give me positivity mm -hmm. instead of bringing me down and bringing the negative. And see, that's your circle of influence. And the Bible tells us, you know, when that's why the fellowshipping is so important. Yeah. And, the, and going back to church was critical. And you, both of you, had a really big mountain to climb. Yes. But with God, all things are possible. Yes. And he definitely has been in your in your life and now you're solid going into church and you're are you active in the church yes i um the assistant to the sunday school teacher at church well look at you yeah all right so uh it's been really great i've never done that before <laughs> but it's fun being with the kids and and just going to church and seeing other couples other families and mm -hmm. um when when they have trouble you know they come to us and ask us about what we've been through mm -hmm. and we just let them know, you know, like it's possible, mm -hmm. you know, your love can be um, renewed and, mm -hmm. and your, your strength together as a marriage can be stronger than ever as long as you have each other and you have God. So you've got I such mean, a sweet spirit. <laughs> you do. You have Thank just you. a sweet spirit and you've been through so much and you're so young. Yes, <laughs> do that. we have been through a lot. Um, what about your parents? Are they okay with this now? Well, um, not really. We, we still have, um, just last Sunday, I asked my pastor to pray for me and my dad to reunite our, our relationship together. We barely speak. Um, mm. But my mom and I, you know, I, there's, there's still things I'm working on mm -hmm. in my life, and, and I still pray about, so... It will come just like yes, this came for me. Absolutely. And um, we were blessed with the new home, like my husband said. And um, I was blessed with the new position in my job. Look at this. And, um, nice. Uh, so that's, that's been exciting. Nice. Um, I became a manager, uh, an activities director at uh, Assisted Living. And that's been a full blessing because I've always wanted to do that. But I we had to really commit <coughs> ourselves to for these things to happen and and to live the way we were living in darkness um yes. just the other day i seen this picture on facebook and they had a picture of a, a couple where uh, they had like stacks of money in their hands and then they had a different picture it said before christ and after christ i love it and i just reposted it and i was like this is me and my husband yes 
Well, thank you, Ms. Priscilla, for sharing and coming thank in front you. of our uh, viewers' uh, camera range here. And I want to reach out to you because we get a lot of, of prayer requests for family unity and inner peace, and you can get it. And she just opened up, and both of them sat down, and when you sit down and talk and l put it at the foot of the cross and leave it there, God will take over. God bless each and every one of you out there, and don't forget that prayer line. You call me if you need something. God bless. On the screen is a little mustard seed. And just look at how little that is. Well, my message today is about our faith. You know, the name of the show is I Believe. And so I want to I want to explain to you just a little bit of faith, how, how far that's going to take you in this world and how simple it is. And I, I'm a gardener. I love plants and stuff like this. So I'm going to relate with a plant, okay? So you take a plant and you, it's a seed, all right? You stick it in the ground. It's just a little itty bitty thing. And what do you do? You water it and you're patient with it. You put it in the right place, you hope. And then every day you go over there and you look at it and there's nothing's happening. And then finally the first day you get so happy when you see it pop up through the ground, through the dirt, okay? And then you keep watering it and you're saying, oh, I'm so happy it's working. And then the next day and about every, about, let's say give yourself a week or so, and you go and you look and it's really now you can see the leaf and you're really I mean I get really excited I'm like yes this is gonna work well I keep watering it and when it gets old I don't know two inches or three inches now guess what I do I nurture it I move it I kind of talk to it and put it where it has better light and I'm excited because I want it to grow <laughs> I want it to just I want to see it grow to full size and so now I'm extra paying attention to it but I can just see that it's gotten off the ground, it's rooted. And so one day I go there and the plant's full size and it's, it's going, it's blossoming. That's how our faith is. You plant that seed, you start thinking, hopefully our show will plant a seed in your heart that you need to believe, that you want to believe, that you wanna open your heart and you wanna say, God, come in. So you go for it and you just kinda of just nurture it. You start talking to God. You start reading the Bible. You start doing things that will get you there. And then pretty soon one day something bad happens and you go, God, help me here. And you see that he does. Well, that's like that little plant popping through the dirt. And then a couple more things happen and you just assume God's going to take care of it because you expect it. You've gotten used to it. You have become a believer. You know that God's going to help you. Like I know once that plant has rooted, it's gone, it's going perfect. I want you to understand that having faith the size of that little mustard seed is where it all begins. And we hope to plant lots of seeds in your life. And so I want you to keep thinking, faith the size of a mustard seed can turn you into the most giant believer there is. And you can share Jesus and share the word with so many people. So remember, start with faith like a mustard seed, you guys and see how far you take it. One day, you're gonna be able to be like me and say, guess what? I'm a believer. Now you can watch the show again on creativechristiannetwork.com. Thank you for watching I Believe with Dr. Gwen Ford.